Thank you very much, Paul. That's a very uh, effusive introduction. I haven't really been on stage for quite a long time, and I have a lot more experience on stage than I ever had in film. Uh, it's lovely to be here. I haven't worn one of these before either, so I'm going to enjoy it, I think. Lovely to be here. Uh, yeah, I live in Connemara, on the edge of the ocean, in a little village called Cleggan. Most people know Cleggan because it's where they get the boat to in Ishbofen from. But basically, it's next stop, Boston. <laughs> and I can safely say I now know more about drainage than any actress in Ireland. <laughs> so as I was driving, because it's quite a long journey, a very pleasant journey, and as the car radio wasn't working, I had plenty of time to reflect, I thought to myself that the title for last year's gathering, Does the Soul Have a Future?, could equally apply this year. Does the soul have a future in an age of technology, artificial intelligence, and transhumanism? Well, you'd be interested to know, it doesn't. <laughs> Humans are hackable animals, according to a man called Noah Yusuf Harari. Is anyone in the audience familiar with the name Noah Yusuf Harari? Well, he's the, uh, very briefly, he's the uh, philosopher in residence, if you like. He's the guru to a man called Klaus Schwab. Have you heard of Klaus Schwab? He's the head of, well, you should have. He's the head of the World Economic Forum. And that unelected bunch are very keen to change the way we live. Absolutely change the way we live. And Klaus Schwab, who wrote a book called COVID-19 and the Great Reset, You'll own nothing and you'll be happy. He also boasts about training a lot of the present world leaders or the people that we have in our governments now. He's very proud of his young leaders. One of them is Jacinta Ardern, New Zealand. Another was Macron. He brought them along, you know, made them what they are today. Uh, Pierre Castro, sorry, <laughs> Trudeau, Justin Trudeau. <laughs> Whoops. And our very own Leo Varadkar. They're all Klaus Schwab's boys. What a phrase. <coughs> Useless eaters is. Just like hackable humans. And who gave us the phrase useless eaters? Henry Kissinger. He was talking about the elderly, a bit rich coming from a man who's about 103. <laughs> but what I wanted to, what I was thinking about on the journey was that men like Klaus Schwab and Noah Harari and uh, Henry Kissinger, and others like them, they're the elite. They're the new royalty. We don't have kings and queens anymore, but we have a royalty. We have a 1% who appear to be very keen on dictating, as I say, how we live. And <clears throat> then, as one thing leads to another, when you're thinking, I was thinking about what Kevin had said in his introduction this year, about Percy French, us adopting him as a mascot, if you like, for our inquiry into present culture. Because Percy French could satirize and play the court jester, and Kevin makes a very good point about that. I mean, the court jester is the last person who can speak truth to the powerful. And Percy French did it beautifully and very subtly but he never lost sight of his real audience, the Irish, the people he was writing for. And Kevin referred to that line from uh, the Mountains of Morn, that verse from the Mountains of Morn, which is very interesting. He describes, I seen England's king from the top of a bust, and though by the Saxon we once were oppressed, still I cheered, God forgive me, I cheered like the rest. We're all part of something, and it's difficult to separate yourself. So as he could satirize, he never lost sight of his people. <clears throat> the mere Irish, as we used to be called. So that led me to think, it was a long drive, that <laughs> when he was satirizing Queen Victoria, she was royalty. But how would he satirize the royalty of today that comes in so many different guises, most of which we can't keep up with? So, <clears throat> with all due respect to the uh, 
ghost of James Murphy, assistant waiter to the Vice Regal Lodge. I've something I want to share with you. I might need a drop of water first. Forgive me, Percy. I'm back, says she. On a flying visit, says she. Me carbon footprint, says she. Has been nearly skint, says she. And I'm not non-binary, says she. That's borrowed finery, says she. And gender fluid, says she. That's very ruined, says she. And as for pride, says she. Well, I nearly died, said she. A whole month of June, says she. And childless spinsters, says she. Can't get an afternoon, says she. Though I don't care, says she, what they wear, says she. Men in drag were never in my bag, says she. All the same, says she, it is a funny game, says she. Reading stories to children, I find that bewildering. And they've altered the seasons, says she. For some private reasons, says she. They're not letting on, but they want the sun gone. There might have been a slate, says she. Off Willie Yates, says she. But isn't Finton no tool? A bit of a fool. <laughs> Parade and party lines in the Irish Times. And me flag is gone, says she. In its place a queer one. And if you'll pardon, says she, the vulgarity. You've sold your asses to the predator classes. And before that flag's furled, says she, they'll own the world. <laughs> You see, uh, if he was alive today, Percy French, I'm, um, I'm convinced of this, the Jarvie, which he enjoyed editing for two years, would be an online weekly. He'd have a massive podcast audience and millions of followers on Twitter. A gifted social commentator like that, blessed with a funny bone and comic skills to match. But would he be woke, is the question. Would he be woke, or would he be cancelled? The way Graham, fathers, Graham Linehan, his father Ted musical, was cancelled a few months ago and wasn't reported very much, cancelled because he had posted a tweet in support of J.K. Rowling, who is firmly of the opinion that there are only two sexes. What would uh, Percy have made of that, do you think? Now, where was I? He'd be very deeply engaged in what's happening to our country, as indeed we should be. This is no time to stand idly by. In fact, there's a line from a Tom Murphy play uh, that came to me when I was driving through Tume yesterday on the way here. Too far, too fast, JJ. Too far, too fast. And you'll be hearing shortly from people who are going to talk about why it's going too far and too fast. Myself, I hail from the Tipex generation, <coughs> the one phone in the house generation. We grew up without devices, electronic at all. We didn't grow up wedded to technology, whereas the young today think of the iPhone as a, an extension of their arm. Only it's not a phone, is it? It's a full-blown, powerful computer. As your one might have put it, we've come a long way, says she, from Nixon's day, says she. When sitting alone, says she, with a Bakelite phone, says she, he talked from his room, says she, to a man on the moon. Did he? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, before I let you get on, where was I now on that? I've got something to finish with, I'm sure. I don't know where, where it is. Oh, yes. Another thing that uh, your, uh, Noah Harari has said, and I think it's something to be taken quite seriously, data, and we're about to have very many data centres here in Ireland, data might enable the elite to do something even more radical than build digital, digital dictatorships. By hacking organisms, us, Elites may gain the power to re-engineer the future of life itself. We need Percy French and people like him. We need the satirists. We need the men who have humor and the women of humor. And we need them to hold the middle ground while we 
desperately try and work out what's going to happen next because, well, if you're anything like me, I don't think we really know. So on that note, I'd like to hand over to the three, the first of the three speakers. They're going to be talking to you about technology and the young. And the young are really facing into something very different, difficult with artificial intelligence, taking a lot of jobs. And then Mary Kenny will talk about demographics. So we have technology, big problem for us to understand and work well with. Artificial intelligence, which even Elon Musk doesn't seem to understand fully. And demographics. So on that note, I'll uh, say thank you. And it's been lovely.